Hey YouTube, it's Jay. So I've been talking for a little while now about how I want to do my next repair and I'm going to do a repair video on it. Uh, and I've also been looking at my shafts and it's very difficult to find a place around where I am where you can get shaft work done. <clears throat> the closest place is about a half an hour away uh, and there used to be another one that I would go to and play pool and get them taken care of while I was there. Uh, it was a place Johnny Archer owned, uh, but it has since closed. So <clears throat> there's nowhere near to really take care of the shafts. And you, you probably, if you've noticed them, um, the ferrules are dirty. The, I, I need to replace the tips. Uh, well, I don't have to replace the tips, but I'd like to replace the tips. And um, so I was, I've been looking at lathes and I found them, the cheapest one I found that was uh, with everything you needed to be able to do a queue uh, was $179. Uh, and they went up from there into the thousands. Uh, and, and those were real wood lathe, real wood lathes, uh, you know, bench top style. Uh, not, not the whole you know, floor to ceiling kind, but the, the bench top style. Um, and while I was doing that, I came across uh, a listing on eBay from Sharpshooter Billiards in uh, Shell Knob, Missouri. And they have a portable Q lathe. Uh, and so I wanted, I, I, it, it's seven, it, it was like, $69 plus shipping or something like that, 64 plus shipping, I, I don't remember, but um, altogether with shipping it was $72. And that's just over a third of the price of that of the cheapest bench top lathe that I could find. And since the only reason I want a lathe is to take care of my cues, I said, well, you know what, maybe this is worth a try. Um, today I'm going to unbox that uh, portable cue lathe and put it together and I'm going to show you what it looks like and how it works and all that kind of stuff and review it for you. So in just a minute, I'm going to throw some wood up here on top of the table. I, you know, I use the leather cover as a way to keep the, keep the, my table from being damaged doing stuff like this. Uh, and then I throw a wood, uh, the piece of wood on top and then I'll use that as a tabletop to do this. So let's go take a look at the Sharpshooter Portable Q Lathe. Now this is what came in the package and they send the manual through the through email. And I've, I've read through the manual um, and of course the very first thing in the manual is caution, read the manual first. Um, and there's, there's, some, uh, there's some notes in here. Uh, the one thing I notice in here is that uh, it's very, very light on pictures. Um, so it does have pictures to show you how it can be mounted and what pieces are in it, but they're very, very, they're, there's just a few. So, um, and then they give you the instructions on how to do a tip replacement, how to do shaft replacement. And the very first thing that they say in here is do not try this on an expensive shaft until you know what you're doing. And I totally agree with them on that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to review what's in the package. I'm going to take the pack. I'm going to uh, put the thing together, uh, and I've got these Irwin clamps to clamp it to this board. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm not actually doing a Q repair. All I'm going to do today is I'm going to smooth my shaft. That just sounds vaguely dirty. Um, using using a green pad, I do this manually anyhow. The the whole point of this is to look at the tool not to actually do the, the repairs. When I do the repairs, I will do those in a separate video um, and I'll, I'll go step by step through what I'm doing. But for today, what we're doing is we're looking at this tool and we're looking at how it works and we're getting a general feel for what's going, what's going on. So let's open this package. Well, first of all, I guess before I actually open the package, on the back of it, it says, hey, read the manual before doing it. Uh, it also says, please note, these products are expensive to ship. We do not accept returns of tools. Now, let me tell you what happened. Since I actually sell on eBay as well, I can tell you what's happened. People today think that they can just order a product, 
like this, use it once, and then ship it back, get their money back, and they've gotten to use it for free. Um, and I personally deplore that. Um, I was going through, I had some radios that uh, I was testing so that I could sell them on eBay, and they were all customer return radios, and I opened a radio box for a current, uh, a current model of a Pioneer stereo, and inside was a, a, an old 1980s Pioneer stereo. Somebody had actually taken a Sharpie, crossed out the model number on the original tag, and handwritten the, the new model number on it, gave it back to Walmart, and Walmart accepted it, and it made its way to me. And it even had a note on it that said, I don't think this is the right stereo. Um, and it was signed off on by an assistant manager. It's just ridiculous how people are taking advantage of the, of the online marketplaces. The online marketplaces are taking it as the cost of doing business for them, but they're passing along that cost of doing business to the little seller. Uh, and so these are on eBay. Um, and I will tell you that I, I totally get where they're coming from with the no returns, but be aware of that. If you have the thought, I'm gonna replace my tip and then I'm gonna ship this back to them, yeah, no, they don't accept returns. So be sure you wanna buy it before you buy it. All right, so what's in the package? Um, we have a universal pool cue drive cup set. Uh, and what that means is it's a, uh, it, a fitting that's meant to go on the, on the pool cue shaft. And it says universal. I'm a little curious about how this is a universal one since there's like 20 different sizes that are used by cue makers. Let's see. So apparently these pull apart. There's two of them here stuck together. Oh, and in the center of the two was a collet for the shaft, which is nothing more than a fancy name for a little piece of plastic you stick around the shaft to protect it from the rollers. Um, and then you've got, apparently the way that they're doing this is when you're turning a shaft, you're turning it this way okay with this around the butt or when you're turning the butt you, you, you put it around the butt and when you're turning the shaft what they're doing is they're this side's going on the drill this side is this this open side is used for the shaft on the small one and the butt on the big one and that's universal because it's it's a cup okay I get it makes sense which means that it will actually fit my Muji, which is good. All right, um, so you got the, and I'm gonna use this paper so you can see them. I have the, the two cups. I have a plastic collet for the shaft. Um, there is in here, so let's see what else we got here, okay. So, there's a piece here to hold the drill. Okay, that's that's for the drill. Um, and it looks like you use a Phillips screwdriver to, to adjust everything. It's, it's definitely out of whack the way that it's sitting. It's gonna have to be refastened together to get it straight up and down because it's not straight up and down. And then you've got one with rollers on it. <clears throat> and the idea is that the that this side sits with the drill, this side sits on the other end of the shaft, the shaft goes through the rollers, and as it spins, the rollers spin. Um, I will definitely have to tighten that down uh, and, and actually kind of reline it up because everything in here is skewed sideways. Um, you can see it's all, it's all slanted off to the side. I don't know how much that actually matters, but I'm kind of in, I'm kind of one of those people I want everything to match up nicely. Um, it does look like the wheels are okay, so maybe I don't need to do that. Maybe I can just, maybe I can just leave it the way it is. Take this one bar loose like, like you're supposed to, uh, and then fit it in the way you're supposed to do it. So I, I guess I need a Phillips screwdriver. I will be right back. I guess I should move those off of the instructions. I, I have a Phillips screwdriver now. Um, so I guess I'll just move that off of the instructions, and what does that use? That uses a flathead screwdriver, and 
the way that it's angled is kind of weird because how are you going to get the okay it's kind of not set up for you to actually get your screwdriver on the ring so i think this should be the other way around So I guess you just have to deal with the way it is. It's a little weird though, because you can't put a screwdriver in it the way it's sitting. It's kind of weird. Um, I mean, you can tell that this was obviously done like a homemade thing. Um, I, think, I think that the concept's good. The question is, will it work? So this is gonna go, going to go in here like this. and wrap around onto the band here. Um, to do that, I'm gonna have to go get a flathead screwdriver. Yay. All right, so we've got a flathead screwdriver. And so there's no way to actually get in there. That's kind of goofy. Um, Tightened up a little, little tightened up to the point where that screw is out where you can actually get to it. That's really a weird way of doing this. I am most likely going to end up loosening this up uh, and spinning this band the other way so you can get to the screw because that's that's kind of it, it, you can see. Very, very difficult to get the screw driver flat in the screw. You have to you have to bend it out of shape to do that. Definitely um, something to think about on your design. So still got a ways to go to tighten this in. And it's it's not the easiest thing to do with. Lined up the way it is. It's either a design or a manufacturing flaw to have that screwed down like that. I mean, all you'd have to do is have gone into the band up here, and this would be up on top, and it instead of sitting in a place where you can't get to it with the screwdriver. It is getting better now that I'm tightening it in, getting it a little tighter around. But even even so, when you're trying to tighten it with the drill in place, I mean, you really can't. You have to. This is really awkward. So while I'm, while I'm tightening this, this, this does feel like a pretty high quality kind of thing. Like the metal is high quality. It's got some weight to it. Um, I'm not sure if it's aluminum or if it's stainless steel, but whatever it is, it's, it's got, a, got a little weight to it. So it's, it's not like super cheap or anything like that. Um, you could probably buy all these parts at the hardware store and make your own. Um, but for me, I just don't have time to, to go to that length on a do-it-yourself project. The only reason I'm going do-it-yourself on this uh, is because I'm going to do my, my shafts. And there's just nowhere around here to get shafts done. There, uh, Johnny Archer used to have a place in uh, Marietta, but he has since closed down, I've heard, and it's 45 minutes for me to get there. so. Um, so probably better just to do it myself here. Uh, there is uh, Mr. Mr. Q's 2, uh, which is over 
at what they call Spaghetti Junction, which is where I-75 and I-285 and I-85 all come together, uh, just uh, east of Atlanta. Okay, so, we've got a drill, and I'm going to tell you that's definitely pointed up, not at the, uh, it's definitely pointed up and not at the other side. So, so, tighten this down a little bit. So you can see, that's kind of a, a weird place for it to be. challenge because of the screw especially which we're not clamped yet make sure that's nice tightly clamped the wipe with the uh, pipe clamp okay let's bring this back and let's see if we can clamp this guy in place so these clamps aren't exactly the greatest clamps. They, they do they do the job for something quick, but uh, put two of them on this one side. Okay, so now put the Q in there. Uh, it doesn't really seem to do a very good job of holding. So that universal thing doesn't really hold the shaft very good for my Muchi. Um, see how it does on the McDermott shaft. Better. Call it, slip it on because we definitely don't want to mess up the shaft. Um, wow, that's pretty tight. That's actually really tight. Yeah, probably going to have to buy a bigger piece of pipe. So, reading the instructions, it says leave it you know, a few inches. He says he usually uses four. All right, so let's put these guys. And these things are in here. How are you supposed to do this if you can't? All right, there we go. There's the T bar. Okay, so we should be able to set this where that little piece of plastic is. We should be able to take our 
T-bars. And so this is probably the place where I would say you have the most chance of screwing this up if you're doing this on your own shaft for the first time. Um, so you want it to hold the shaft snug, but you don't want to press so far that you get dents in the shaft. So I'm just going to lay this on top. I'm not really going to try to tighten it. I'm just going to see I'm holding it. It's holding it firmly, but it's not holding it so firmly that it's going to uh, screw, screw up the shaft. Okay, so here we are. We are now installed. I should have put that closer to the edge so I can do my clamp. So let's, uh, first let's pull the shaft out of there. I'm gonna clamp this guy and let's move him closer to the edge. So that, he, so that I can clamp the other piece. So as I can get that clamp, I probably so when I when I do the shaft for real, I'm going to take advantage of these holes, and I'm going to drill this thing directly into or uh, anchor it directly in my workbench so that it's not wobbly. But it, for purposes of checking this thing out and seeing that it works the way that it's advertised this will probably work just fine i'm not trying to actually do any shaft repair here i'm simply okay so that probably wasn't a good idea let's we'll do these and we'll reseat them And again, I'm not looking at this as a replacement for a wood lathe for or any other use. I'm just looking at this as a way to maintain my, my cues. Um, I will definitely have to do something about getting something for the shaft on the Muji because that uh, is not going to work in here. This is a universal butt cup thing, which also sounds vaguely dirty. Doesn't really get it either. Okay, let's just double check the instructions, blah, 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 cross drill, clamp to rest on the support arm and tighten because crossbar is adjustable using T-nuts, you can raise, raise and lower it. So you can raise your drill up from where it is to get it nice and level if you need to, um, which I would certainly recommend as you're doing this. The T-bars are these bars that have the screws in them. Um, again, I'm not looking to actually do, do a recondition or anything like that, I'm looking to just Test out the product, see how it works. Put it in there, tighten the shaft. Okay, blah, blah, blah. My, my drive cup set is assembled. My, might require minor adjustments to ensure the proper fit. If it's loose, place a wrap of blue painter's tape around it to get a snug fit. Um, okay. Um, so they do recommend that you take blue painters, you know, the, the post-it kind of tape that you use for painting a room, it's blue, you wrap it around to protect the, the finish from damage. Um, all right. Same thing with this, position the shaft at the lower wrist and put this drill chuck and tighten. Do not over tighten. Use the collet. Raise and lower the crossbars to adjust. We simply did. We already did that. Um, obviously, we're not trying to get it perfect. Uh, do not need to use a maximum speed with your motor. Do not run it for extended period at slow speeds. That does burn up motors. So, uh, okay. And then, uh, so we're actually ready to test it. Uh, 
Now, I did not use blue painter's tape, so I may get some rubber on that, but this shaft is kind of messed up to begin with, so I'm okay with that. And then, so you can see, um, I've got this clamp now. I've got the, here's the, the motor, here's the shaft. Now, this is, this is definitely working. It spins, I've got the plastic protecting the shaft there. I, I can spin it, I can spin it to whatever speed I want to. And you can see the, the stuff coming off. It works well. Um, it does what it's supposed to do. Uh, and I, we, can, we can take this and move it a little, move the, move the collet up a little bit so that we can uh, finish with the, the rest of it. So after I've done the rest of it, you do have to move the collet and move this to a different location like so in order to uh, make sure you do the part that was under the collet when you were doing your work. So if you're doing something like I'm doing where you're just smoothing the shaft and cleaning the ferrule, oops, cloth is stuck. It's my fault. I got too close to the wheels and it got wrapped around, which is a bad thing. Get that out of there. Good no, no damage to the shaft. Let's pull this. Let's loosen these for a second. So I can get my shaft out of there. Move the collet a little bit. Okay. All right, there we go. All right, let me get this in here, get that on that. Get that sitting on it. You don't want to crush it, so leave it nice and straight there. This and tighten it down a little. All right, so that is the uh, Sharpshooter Portable Pull Cue the back. Can't say this, it's a tongue twister. The Sharpshooter Portable Pool Q Lathe. Uh, and we put it together, you, you saw me do, do things. Here's my impressions. Uh, for the most part, very positive. I, I liked what I saw. The only recommendation I would make to them about the, about the manufacturing is to make sure that the screw on the, uh, the pipe clamp is uh, accessible. It was not accessible and that was actually one of the biggest pains in this whole pro process. It actually took me more time screwing and unscrewing that screw on the, on the pipe clamp than it did everything else in the entire thing. Now that said, I did use the, I used the lathe um, to, uh, to clean all the shafts. And they came out really nice. You can see the, uh, the ferrules nice and white. I uh, got a nice burnished tip there. I reshaped my tips while I was at it using the Willard Shaper on the end of it while it was in the lathe, which made that whole process of going from a flat tip to a rounded tip much easier. I could have done it with a file, but hey, I've got the Willard Shaper. Why not just stick it on the end and make it work? Um, came out really nice. And overall, uh, would I recommend it? Yes, I would. If you have pool cues to take care of, for the price, I don't think you can beat it. Um, will it replace a wood lathe? No. Will it take care of your pool cues? Yes, it will. Uh, I'll put a link to it down below if you want to get one. You can get them on eBay. And uh, I would say that this is a four and a half star review. If you wanted a five star review, you the, the screw on the pipe clamp is the reason it's not a five star. So thank you very much. Have a great day and we'll see you next time. But don't forget, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. We'll see you later. Bye.